back in the day, so this is 21 years ago when I had Nick in my class, it's just the way he was. He, Nick was Nick, and Nick was going to do what he was going to do, and if he felt like doing that at that moment, that's what he was going to do. I pulled the fire alarm in her class. I don't know why I did that. I just, I was standing by and I was screwing with it, and I knew it was a fire alarm or something. You know, I was in second grade. It, it, you know, I just didn't really understand how the fire alarm worked, you know, because I would kind of mess with it and then I think I kind of started I just I didn't mean to pull the fire alarm but I was screwing with it too much <laughs> and I ended up pulling it and uh, I was like oh no I did not just do that and, I, and then like I was the only one standing there <laughs> I'm like it it went down <laughs> I was like and she's like you pulled it and I was like oh it was, it was bad. It didn't surprise me. <laughs> it was like, oh, Nick. Since all of this, I looked on YouTube, and I've seen some videos of him, because I haven't seen him since he was a kid. He's the exact same. He doesn't make eye contact. He talks very slow and deliberate, takes a breath between words. I mean, when I saw him on that video, he was the exact same kid. I had, a, I had a hard time. I, I moved around schools a little bit. One school has got one type of people, and then another school has got another type of people. So I, I got to learn a lot about people, I think, on account of that. I, I don't know how much I learned in school, but I did get to learn a lot about different types of people. Going to a school where it's not so hard, I really stood out as like a hardcore guy when I'm not so hardcore in a hardcore school. So it was just no fitting in anywhere. What happened was, you know, I'd end up in these confrontations all the time because I was gonna fight with this kid, and all his friends were like, "Hey, well, you're hey, you're gonna fight this guy, you know, he's, you know, you're gonna fight, uh, you're gonna fight Justin, you know, you're gonna," uh, and I'd be like, "Hey, fuck you," you know what I mean? Because it, it, they think it's funny or they're talking, or someone will come up and be like, "Yeah, you're gonna fight Justin Acello, he's gonna whoop your ass," and I'd be like, "Yeah." You, I'm gonna whoop your ass, and then next thing you know, oh, you do that dude, you, you, you know, you mess with that dude, and now you're gonna, you know, you know, this is so and so, so now I got problems with this dude, I got problems with this dude. So I'm just, you know, high school was hard time. <laughs> high school was hard times. Immediately, they consider me dangerous. They're like, you, you hit this guy and you drew blood from him and you cut him and you are dangerous and we can't have you on campus. And I'm like, I was attacked. And <laughs> so I'm just, that's all I can think about. Like, I didn't even start this, you know? <laughs> they had an issue with my attendance already because I wasn't having good attendance anyways because I didn't want to show up at school and end up having to blast somebody. And you don't know if you're gonna get shot or stabbed or jumped at school because that's what happens to the, everybody else. It's not like I'm, you know, oh, I'm just paranoid or something. I'm not paranoid. I'm not stupid. You know, that's why I win these fights now because I'm not stupid. It's just like now, you know, before fights, you get a little pumped up. And you feel like that when you're going to school? You know, I think you look. Everybody's like, hey, uh, you're sitting there waiting to fight. Then they put these cameras on me. I'm sitting here waiting to fight. And then yeah, I'm, in, I'm, in, say, I'm back in high school. It was a mess, and you're like, oh, why don't you leave the camera? Why don't you leave the camera? I'm like, take the camera out of my face already. He doesn't do MMA to be popular. Nick doesn't do MMA to get a pat on the back. Nick doesn't train and fight uh, to get people's approval. Nick does it to survive because he knows this is his one shot. He's had everything that the world can throw at him. He is not easily intimidated, and you can't break Nick Diaz. Sometimes he gets upset. When you ask me why he gets upset, it's his inability to express himself verbally. That's why he's a fighter. But when he gets in that ring, he's a poet. He's a poet in motion. He was always told he wasn't good enough. He was always told he's not going to make it. He was always told, you don't belong here, and you know, you're know, you not one of these rich kids. And, and 
you know, when he fights, I think he does bring some of that back. And uh, unfortunately for his adversary, that's where that energy goes. Dick would take on uh, anybody and anything at any time, you know. You didn't get the best yet, tomorrow you better be ready to do it again. He had some behavior problems and also he had some gang problems. Gangs were trying to recruit him because he had a reputation of being tough and the gangs wanted to have him join up. He wanted to better himself, I could see that. When he didn't do his work, he'd have to do a few push-ups. Okay, you didn't do your homework, 25, give me 25. Let's do it. I wrestled when I was like 14, 13 in a park and rec thing. I was cutting weight for that because I was like two pounds over and I wanted to make the weight, you know. I was like, okay, I can do that. So I made weight for that. That was probably the first time I ever made weight for something. I must have been like 14 or 15. It was a wrestling tournament. I got f pinned by s first by some, some dude with his older brothers were there. They were like pinned me real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? His brothers were there. They're like, they're like, they're like, man, you animal. They're like, and I was just like, oh man, I wanted to, I was like crying or something. I was like, not there, but I was like, had to take a walk. I was angry, you know, wrestling was not working out well for me. Uh, I mean, I liked wrestling. I wanted to be good at it. I just was having a hard time learning. I watched the UFCs. I ran into the tapes. I saw Hoist Gracie. I said, I can do this. I started doing jujitsu. Uh, somewhere when I was like 15, 16, sophomore year, high school. And um, that's when I met Steve Heath. I noticed immediately, uh, I teach a move, you'd do it right the first time. I taught him the same move, you'd do it better the second time. By the third time, he did it better than me. And I'm training with Steve every day for months, and then he finally, I finally realized that he learned from Caesar Gracie. And I'm like, who's Caesar Gracie? And I'm like, you're telling me, like, there's cousins and, like, you know, I'm trying to figure out the whole family tree thing. When I first met Nick, he was a guy that, you know, he was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Jiu-Jitsu offered him an avenue to look at the world in a different way. He didn't relate well in school because they tell you you're going to do this homework, you're going to learn it the way we're going to teach you, and, and that's how you're going to do it or you're going to fail. And with martial arts, it was something that he could do his way. He would uh, start coming in every day. I asked him, I said, hey, aren't you supposed to be in school? And he goes, I'd rather come here and train. You know, uh, I have no interest in school. In order to love fighting, I have to hate it. There's no love in this without hate. You gotta love it so you want it so bad that you're pushing yourself to those limits to where you just simply hate it. And if you ain't there to where you hate it, then good luck trying to love this. You know, what you see is what you get. I'm not out here trying to put on an act like I'm crazy. In my opinion, everybody else is crazy out of their mind. They're the ones putting on an act for you. The camera gives them a line and they say it 10 times over again. And they turn these guys into these robots. I'm the only one being realistic about this sort of thing. People want to. Uh, call me a crazy guy and point the finger and tell me I rant and rave. I'm out here staging anything. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get through this. You know, I'm gonna do what I gotta do to survive and keep my teeth in my head and my head on my shoulders. This isn't a joke. I'm not staging a little act. This is not for fun. This is not a side thing. This is fighting. I don't think that the, f the fans out there, the viewers, need to see anything more than what I'm bringing to the table. This is as real as it gets. I'm not gonna smile for the camera. That would be crazy to start believing in myself and thinking, oh yeah, I'm the biggest part of the show and all happy me and everybody loves me and oh, I'm the superstar. That's crazy, that's right there. That's the last thing I'm gonna believe. All I'm gonna believe is I'm coming to whoop somebody's ass. What are these? Who, who makes these what, questions up? These, these questions are seriously. This is not like what are these? These are all tricks. This is all like. I 
I'm low on water, I'm low on calories, I'm low on food, I'm low on energy, and I'm more so than anything low on patience with, with, with anything that takes patience. If you ask me something stupid, then I'm gonna answer it with something stupid. And if I hear myself talk something stupid and I'm really pissed off, depressed, and been out of shape about it, I might throw a really serious fit for no reason.